Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Today we're going to look at form level validation in Power Apps. And I know it might sound like a boring topic, but truth be told, if it's not done correctly, it could actually create quite a bad user experience and your users can very easily feel like they're being shouted at by Power Apps. So we've come up with um, a way that we prefer to use it and we've, we've used it for a while. We think it, it works very well and this is what we're going to be showing you today. Truth be told is that for the longest time we've preferred to use patch in order to commit data. But with responsive designs we've realized that to manipulate the way that the forms are, or the fields are being display, displayed on the Power App becomes quite a mission if you don't use the Microsoft form. So, or the Power Apps form roller. So we, it forced us to relook at the way that we use these forms and to face our Achilles heel, which was the validation on the forms or something that we really didn't like in the beginning. So we're gonna show you the problem before we get into the solution. And um, so thank you for watching and, and let's get cracking. Right, so here's a very basic Power App and we're now gonna add some validation to this form. At the moment, if we go and add a new expense, it's allowing us to submit uh, this record without specifying all the data and that is a bit of an issue for us. So what we want to go and do is mark these cards as being mandatory. So let's go click on the title and if we go to required we'll just make sure it's unlocked and then go and set that to true. Right so that's fine expense amount unlock it under advance and then go to required and set this to true and same here for the description expense claims are useless if we don't have descriptions and the same for date created so just go and say required is true all right so this works well uh, power apps is actually putting the little asterisk over here to say that this is mandatory and all of these things work well but if you try and submit this without these fields being populated you really get a very abrasive error so you get red all over the screen you get red a red notification bar at the top and all of this is is not very pleasing to look at so we've had a look at, at multiple ways to go and fix this red error at the top so we've tried to I'm going to put this back into the studio. So we thought about customizing this errand, uh, <laughs> error, this error over here. But the problem is that you then lose any native errors that you might get back from the data source. Um, so we decided not to change that. We then decided to, well, let's try and get rid of that red bar at the top. And to some extent, you can do that by just passing another... Um, Let's go to that form. There's on failure and currently that's set to false. Now if you change this to notify, um, it gives you the opportunity to present uh, a more pleasing error. So some data might or seem to be missing. And we might say that this is a information error and that seems to work on a browser. But the moment you do this on a mobile device, you'll find that this error isn't actually covering the red one. It's just, it's not actually putting in top of it. It's just giving you another error. So then you've got a very ugly red error and then this blue or green one that you, you choose to, to display. So we, we just, we, we were, we've never been a fan of that. And that forced us to look at a different way of doing things. Right, so what we came up with, and uh, this is what I'm going to show you today, is if you click on this little asterisk over there, first of all, let's go and make that red. So just that it, it stands out a little bit more. So just change the, sorry, not the boldness. You can change the boldness, I guess, as well. But let's just change the color to red so that they just stand out that little bit more and to show the user that there is information required in this field. Right, so that helps somewhat. Now, next thing what we want to go and do is we want to say that this asterisk shouldn't only show up when um, this is a mandatory field, but it should show up if it's a mandatory field and it doesn't have a value. So in other words, if you 
um, have a value in this then it's fine we don't want to still show that res red asterisk so to do that we just go into the visible property just for that asterisk so make sure we've got the star visible control selected and then we can change this from parent dot required to say that if the parent is not valid so so it should be a full stop not a comma and that should be a comma so this says exclamation parent dot valid it basically says that if it's not valid then display this otherwise hide it all right so that gives us quite a bit of the functionality that we we need and um, I'll show you how that works just now so let's go and say that all of these things change the visible on all of these asterisk controls and uh, and then I'll show you what we we do in addition to this to just enforce these to try and avoid that red error at the top so here you'll see that uh, we've now updated all of those but now if we go and save this if we go and say put in a title so let's say we had some beers um, you'll see that the the asterisk now goes away because now this card is valid and that that works very very well but nothing prevents you from saving this button or, or clicking this button and then still getting that error um, at the top and all of these fields jumping out at you so typically what we want to do to prevent that from happening is tell this button not to be available if there are any invalid cards on this form so if there are cards that are not valid this rolls up and this could be measured at a form level as well so what we then go and do on this icon we'll tell it that the display mode is not edit we want to say that if the form and this form name uh, I forget is edit form 1 if edit form 1 dot valid then we want to say display mode is edit otherwise we want to set the display mode to disabled so that means is if there's any red asterisk on this form then don't allow the user to submit now at the moment it's not very clear if you look at this icon it's not that clear to see that it is disabled so we might just want to go and change the color of it so if we go into that control and go to color we'll, ha we'll see that that's the, the color uh, that it's currently at so that's white and if we now go to disabled color sorry that's disabled border color we're looking for disabled color we can either manually type in the color that we want or we can go and say color fade and then select the name of the icon so I can accept dot color and then pass it the second parameter and then give it the inverse value so if we say that set this to minus 50 percent then it's going to turn it to a, a darker shade of white um, instead of fading it so if we now look at this we'll see that that's grayed out and you can't click on this until you actually go and edit or supply all of the fields that are mandatory before submitting the form you can then go one step further and basically go and um, also on the tooltip so in other words if you hover over the icon you'll see at the moment it says submit item so we can go and say on on the tooltip as well that if the form is valid then display something otherwise something else but a better way of doing it is just referring to the icons own uh, display mode property so you don't have to have code all over the place basically saying the same thing so we can go and say if the icon accept I need a bracket over there so if icon accept one dot display mode equals display mode edit then we want to display submit um, record otherwise we want to say uh, please complete all fields before submitting and that should us give us the behavior that we want so if we now hover over that 
So it says, please complete all the fields. So the user can't click it. All of that's working well. But if the moment they go and specify all of this data, you'll see that these things would go, it would disappear one by one. So beers at the event, as well as the date. You see now all of a sudden this field or this icon becomes active again. I can now submit this record. Let's make sure it goes through. There we go. It took a little bit longer than what I would have hoped, but everything everything worked well. So now if you wanted to add more advanced business logic to this form, you also have the ideal place to do that. Because we also find that's uh, a question that comes up a lot. And where do you put these things now? And you, you don't want to add multiple things all over the place. It just confuses the form. So if you do it in this way, there's now another opportunity here to, because we don't have to just check for everything to have a value because that's taken care of by the form already. We could just go and add additional business logic in a in a central place. So for argument's sake, let's go and add just drag this down there and add a label in here. This I know this is not going to work on a responsive app. We'll get there. That's a different video for a different discussion. So yeah we the idea with this is to display our generic errors in this or our errors in this generic label. So in here we can now first of all just go and make that red. It is an error nonetheless. And make that say 20. And in here we can go to text and say that and now build our advanced rules in here. So if we wanted to check and make sure that the expense amount was not greater than 20, for an example, we can go and say that if we just now need to go and check what the data card value is for expense amount. If you have a look in the card, its expense amount sits over there and the value is going to be in data card value 6. So if data card value 6 dot text and we're just going to have to wrap this in a value to turn that text into a number. If that's greater than 20, for an example, then we can say um, you're not allowed to buy that much stuff. Otherwise, it's blank. Actually, we don't even need to provide an otherwise. So this will be blank and you cannot tell the button at the top of the icon to also be disabled when this I with this label has a value. So let's go and rename this properly and so this is uh, label error message. Let's copy that. And now in the icon we can say that it's display mode. If the edit form is valid then edit. So we want to say if the edit form is valid and that generic label dot text is blank then only is this editable otherwise it's still disabled so if we go and test this and title is food expense amount is 10 description is uh, this is a test I'm running out of creative ideas for expense claims so you'll see at this stage the icon is now active and I can actually submit this or save this record the moment I change this to 20, 21 rather, you'll see that I get this error in this generic label over here. So you don't have to create 30 labels for your different 30 different business cases or business rules rather. So if you wanted to now add multiple rules, you could simply go into this field, or sorry, into this label and go and add your rules with concatenate. So Let's say we wanted to have another rule exactly like this one, which doesn't make sense, but you never know. You can go and say add char value 13 plus char value 10, and this will give you basically a new line and feed. So you can concatenate that with another one of these. Let's just do shift enter, paste this. It's now going to show this exact same error twice which it does just underneath each other. So then you might want to just have the form move down accordingly. 
so we want to go and take just that label name and in the form y property we'll go and say that we want that to start um, that label dot y plus label dot height cool and then at the same time let's just go and change that label to auto height I see that's the case already so if we have another business case or sorry business rule that we want to add underneath this you'll simply go and add that and then you can go and say if false just make that false for now then don't display and as you can see that's not displaying that area it's only displaying the two and the moment you then turn this to true now all of a sudden you have three errors all right so there we go just add a dash in there for consistency sake and uh, so there you've got a, a very nice generic way to do validations on a standard power apps form and then still get to use all of the other great benefits from it so thank you very much for watching um, i hope that you found this video helpful if you did please share comment like subscribe do all of these things it helps us to to promote the, the cause and to share these videos with the community so thank you very much for watching and have a good day bye bye